Baruch here at Gen Baruch here with Jen Connect with Joey Lauren Adams and Tim Blake Nelson at the screening of Blue Caprice. How are you both? Good. Very well. Yeah. Now, obviously, this is a very serious film. This is a film that has a very strong message, especially when we're dealing with so much gun violence in this country. What do you hope that the audience will take away from this? Um, for me, it you know, when I read the script originally, it was interesting to read it, sort of the origins. Like, you always hear about it in the news of how many people were killed, but you never really hear the why they do it. And I don't know if it's by the time they figure it out, like, the news has moved on. But it was interesting to sort of, this, the script goes back and tells the story of, like, how these two met, how he brainwashed him, you know, the whys of it. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good explanation. It's it anatomizes uh, evil and the different strains running through the film about how people unwittingly abet evil along the way, along with a core father and son relationship that the movie explores in a very weirdly gentle and sensitive way against the backdrop of cold-blooded murder is quite compelling. It's, it's, it's a great script and um, beautifully and sensitively shot. Do you think that when we actually anatomize evil, we can actually get to the root of the source of evil and maybe help prevent future evil? Well, yeah, that's the hope. I mean, I don't think we would want to be involved in movies that simply aestheticize capital crimes. Uh, you want there to be a purpose. And I think that if, if any movie accomplishes that, it's going to be this one. Yeah, and I think it just shows how, you know, people can get isolated. You know, and certain things can happen in their life that just make them feel as if the world's against them. Again, it's just understanding, you know, how someone goes from like, oh, I'm a normal guy with a family and kids to killing people, you know, and this whole plan to just instill fear. The human process of it. Yeah, yeah. Now, Joe, you've played lighter roles, more funny roles, you've played more serious roles. How do you, as an actress, really approach different, the different seriousness of each role differently? Um, well, with this script in particular, when I read it, like, the dialogue is so sparse. Like, it's just, it's a very quiet retelling of this story, and, and immediately I understood the tone of it. And then I knew Tim was doing it, and I know Tim. So it was like, well, of course, yeah. yeah. And, and Tim, you've actually worn different hats. You've been in the director's chair, and you've been an actor. So when you approach these different roles, do you have a different frame of mind? Well, I guess I hope I have a sensitivity to what a great script is. I do want to point out that Joey is also a writer-director. I was in her movie, Come Early Morning, which was at Sundance. 2006. 2006. Um, so you guys go way back. You have a long and serious... ...directed by her, which was great. What was that like? But he's never cast me. Uh-oh, uh-oh, pressure's on to... That will happen. I have a role in mind for her, actually. Um, you heard it here first. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, it was, I, I, I think one of the reasons that Joey and I did this movie was because we were going to get to act with one another, even though we're playing a couple in which I'm cuckolded, and she, she sleeps with somebody else. So I, That's not nice. Dignity. Um, but uh, it gave me the opportunity, actually, to be on screen having gotten a woman that beautiful to marry me. And so anytime I can play a character... <laughs> Alex made me do my hair on <laughs> Anyway, so no, it was great. It's wonderful acting together, but we're really acting in service of uh, Alexander Moore's great film and these, the lead performances of Isaiah Washington and Taquan. Um, that's, that's the heart of the movie, and we're just lucky to be around. We're furniture. Oh, no. Well, Joey, I've got to ask you one more question. You still live in Mississippi, right? I do, yes. Tell me about that decision to live in a place that isn't really Hollywood-centric, not to live in Los Angeles, not to live in New York. Well, I did 19 years in L.A., and that was enough. That was enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, at that point in my life, you know, it was just what I needed to do. But the town that I live in in Oxford is a big literary town, and I had started writing. I'd just done my film. And so I was writing more scripts, and it's a big literary town. There's lots of writers there. So it was nice to be around people who write novels instead of scripts. Because they, they would read my stuff and say, like, oh, let's talk about this story, not 
well, who are you going to get to play that role that will finance this movie? Focus on the essence of the story. Exactly. And it's just, you know, you can walk everywhere. You can, there's a sense of community, which, you know, I think is one of the big problems with all the violence in America, is we don't have that anymore. Do you know, in the film, Isaiah's character is so isolated. So, anyway, community. Thanks, Joey. Thanks, Tim. Good to meet you both. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.